Hi guys, how are you doing? Welcome back to Chemical Pandemic Lecture Series. In previous class, we had discussed about the wet sheeter test and its application. In today's lecture, we are going to discuss about consecutive reaction or sequential reaction. So we are going to discuss about the consecutive reaction. Okay, consecutive reaction. Generally, in complex reactions, if simple reaction takes place successively, then they are called as consecutive reactions. Okay, if the simple reaction takes place successively instead of simultaneously, then they are called as consecutive reactions. For instance, let us take the thermal decomposition of H2. So we are taking thermal decomposition of acetone thermal decomposition of acetone so thermal decomposition thermal decomposition thermal decomposition of acetone acetone so acetone is the ketone its structural formula is ch3 c double bond o ch3 it is the structural formula so on decomposition or on heating okay on thermal decomposition or on heating at high temperature it can be dissociated into the in initially kt okay initially it will be kt that is ch2 double bond c double bond o plus you can get the methane okay it is the first step later in the second step this kt so kt it is the kt that will be again undergoes dissociation and gives the et it is ch2 double bond ch2 plus you can get the carbon monoxide here you can get the half moon of the et okay here we have the two simple reactions they can take place successively one after the another will take place okay so if we don't have the et we don't get the et from the acetone okay so the formation of the et is a very important step for the formation of the final product et okay so these final products are depending upon the intermediates et is the reaction intermediate therefore what we are saying in complex reactions if simple reaction takes place successively then it is called as consecutive reaction okay consecutive reaction so if you observe this reaction then it takes place one after the another that means they are taking in place in sequence okay they are taking place in sequence hence these are also called as sequential reactions it is sequential reactions sequential sequential reactions they are also called as sequential reactions okay sequential reactions are successive reactions okay these are also called as successive successive reactions successive reactions so therefore the chemical reactions in which reactant forms an intermediate and the intermediate forms products in one or more subsequent steps okay so they are forming in one step or in many subsequent steps so that type of the reactions are called as consecutive reactions or sequential reactions okay so how we are defining the chemical reactions in which reactant forms an intermediate that intermediate forms final products in one step or in sequence of many steps okay in sequence of many steps so they are they are called as sequential reactions or successive reactions or consecutive reactions so let us take a few more examples so we are taking a few more examples so next one is 
thermal decomposition of dimethyl ether thermal decomposition thermal decomposition decomposition of dimethyl ether are simply methoxy methoxy methane decomposition of methoxy methane it is also an example for the constitutive reaction so the formula is CH3O CH3 okay it is the dimethyl ether on heating initially we can get the formaldehyde and methane initially we can get the formaldehyde it is H C double bond O H it is the formaldehyde okay formaldehyde or methanol it is also called as methanol it is the cipher name is methanol plus we can get the methane CH4 okay so in the second step this formaldehyde will be undergoes further dissociation and use hydrogen gas plus we can get the carbon monoxide okay so it is also two step process okay it is also two step process finally we can get the hydrogen gas and the carbon monoxide as the products and the third example is decomposition of hydrogen peroxide decomposition 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 of hydrogen peroxide okay hydrogen peroxide so take hydrogen peroxide and heat and heat on heating we can get the water plus we can get the nascent oxygen it is the nascent oxygen which is highly reactive less stable so immediately undergoes combination reaction and we can get the oxygen okay so two nascent oxygen will be combined then we get the oxygen molecule so it is also another example for the consecutive reactions or sequential reactions or successive reactions and the fourth one is oxidation of hydrogen iodide oxidation of hydrogen iodide by hydrogen peroxide so oxidation 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 of hi hydrogen iodide by hydrogen peroxide by hydrogen peroxide so in the first step i minus so hi is the an acid dissociated into H plus and I minus. So I minus will be combined with the hydrogen peroxide. Then we can get the hypoiodate ion. This is called as the hypoiodate. Yeah. Hypoiodate. Yes. This is hypoiodate. Hypoiodate. I O minus. I O iodate. I O iodate. Plus we can get the water. Okay. I O iodate. Ion plus we can get the water. So this I O iodate may combine with the H plus ions. Then we get the H I O. H I O. So it is. Uh, like hypohalous acid, okay. Hypoiodous acid. Now it is called as hypoiodous acid. So this kind of the series is generally called as hypohalous acid series. You may be taught it in the uh, PUC second year. So it is hypoiodous acid. So in the next step, this HIO, HIO will be combining with the H I hydrogen iodide okay hydrogen iodide there you can get the uh, what you can get you can get the R2 plus you can get the water you can get the water H2O and I2 so this is the another important example for the 
conjugative reaction or sequential reaction and the next one is so next one is reduction of nitric oxide by hydrogen reduction of reduction reduction of nitric oxide by hydrogen by hydrogen so if we combine the nitric oxide with the hydrogen there we can get the nitrogen it is n2 plus we can get the h2o yeah n2 plus h2o2 we can get the n2 plus h2o2 which is called as hydrogen peroxide so in the second step this is the hydrogen peroxide h2o2 is react with hydrogen gas and finally gives the water so we can get the two moles of water so this is the another example for the conjugative reactions next one is nuclear reactions or radioactive decay okay simply nuclear reactions nuclear reactions nuclear reactions so there we have the two types of reactions one is nuclear fission another one is nuclear fusion so if you take any nuclear nuclear fission and the best example for the conjugative reaction or sequential reaction for instance let us take uranium uranium so on decomposition we can get the thorium okay uranium on decomposition will gives the thorium thorium on further decomposition will gives the protoactinium okay protoactinium so protoactinium i related so many steps finally we can get the lead okay it is also undergoing the several several uh, reactions okay it is undergoing the subsequent reactions and finally giving the lead which is the final product okay it is the final product so these are also example for the conjugative reactions okay so that's why in general in the general way reactant a a is converting into the b okay a is converting into the b so it, this is the general reaction in general we are taking the general way so a is converting into the b so b again react itself what is the reactant a and gives the c okay so c on further reaction we can get the yeah we can get the a d or so on okay so this is the general reaction for the conjugative reactions otherwise this is the general representation of conjugative reactions okay and if we observe these reactions so here we have to uh, uh, extract the uh, two important characteristics so one is so the first one is now we are going to take the characteristics 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 so if you take the first characteristics so initially what you know you these reactions are generally takes place successively instead of simultaneous okay so that's why here what you are right conjugative reactions generally take place successively okay these reactions are generally takes place successively that is the first characteristic okay and second one is you observe these reactions so histone is the reactant it is giving the an intermediate later intermediate is undergoing the dissociation and finally giving the ethylene and carbon monoxide whereas if you take the second one so our intermediate is the methanol and final product is the hydrogen gas and carbon monoxide and if you take the uh, decomposition of the peroxide so here it is water and nascent oxygen nascent oxygen is the reaction intermediate so finally we get the o2 so that's why okay o2 later in the oxidation reaction our intermediate is the io minus okay io minus so this io minus in the next step combining with the hi and giving the i2 okay i2 
Whereas in the other cases, NO, yeah, NO is combined with the H2 molecule and giving the nitrogen and the hydrogen peroxide. So this peroxide is again combined with the original reactant. Okay, so H2 is the original reactant. NO and H2 are the reactant for this reaction. So H2O2 is the reaction intermediate. This reaction intermediate is combining with the Original reactant. Okay, this is the original reactant. Okay, original reactant. Whereas, uh, if you take the which one? Yeah, oxidation reaction. So here, HI and hydrogen peroxide. Okay, hydrogen iodide and hydrogen peroxides are the original reactants. Okay, they are the original reactants. Whereas, IO minus are the reaction intermediate. Okay, these are the reaction intermediate. So this reaction intermediate is combining with the original reactant, HIE the original reactant. Okay, so yeah, original reactant in the fourth case and fifth cases, our reaction intermediates are combining with the original reactants. Whereas if you take the first, okay, first case, second case, and third case, so their reaction intermediates are combining themselves and giving the final products. So therefore, what we can conclude here in complex reactions, the products form. Okay, so here we have the intermediate products. That means uh, uh, we can say reaction intermediates. Okay, so products products formed react with each other. Okay, so the products which are formed in the first step, they will be react with each other. Okay, they will be react with each other. Or in other cases that intermediates will be react with the original reactants. So that's why what you have to conclude in consecutive reactions the products which are formed in the first step may either react with themselves or with the original reactants. So it is the important characteristic. Okay. So this is the second characteristic and the third one is so anyway all the cases what we can say Products are not forming directly, you see. So here we have the reaction intermediate, here also the reaction intermediate, here also the reaction intermediate. So in every case, we have the reaction intermediate. So that is the reaction intermediate either combines itself or with the original reactants and finally giving the final product. Okay, so that's why what we can say in the consecutive reactions, the products are do not form directly from the reactants. Okay, they do not form directly from the reactants. Okay, so these three are the very important characteristics. So anyway, <coughs> in this constitutive reaction cases, if we plot a graph between the concentrations of A, B, C versus time. So there we have the different uh, phenomena or criteria. So let me see. So here, yeah, there I have to draw. Now we are going to draw the a graph between the concentration of the this A, B, C versus time. So if you do like that, what we can see? Uh, let, let us do. So here we are plotting the graph between the which one? Time. Time on the x axis, this is the x axis, and concentration on the yeah, y axis. This is y axis. Here we are taking the concentration. Okay, concentrations. Okay, so if you take the concentration on the y axis and time on the x axis. So in first case you take reactant A. So generally during the reaction, the concentration of the reactant is increases or decreases, it is generally decreases. So A is the starting material, the reactant. So it is generally decreases. The concentration of A is decreases gradually. Okay. Yeah. It, its concentration is gradually decreases. Whereas if you see this C, assume it is the final product. So the product concentrations are generally increases. So that's why here what we can say product, product concentration.
which is generally increases. It is generally increases. Whereas if you take the concentration of the B, so it is a, it is a reaction intermediate. So that's why if you plot a, a graph between the concentration of the B versus time, so here initially its concentration reaches to the maximum. Okay, so later it will be decreases. Later it will be decreases. Initially it is reaching to the maximum and later it is decreasing. Okay, so that's why here what we have to uh, conclude if we plot a graph between the concentration of A, B, C versus time. So what we are saying the concentration of reactant A is gradually decreases. Whereas the concentration of the product uh, C is gradually increases. And finally, if you take the concentration of the B, initially it will be reaches to a maximum, and later it will be falls with the time. Okay, it will be falls with the time. So this is the A and this is the C and this is uh, B. Okay, so that is about the B. So these are the important characteristics of the to reactions or sequential reactions. Now we have to discuss about the reaction kinetics of consecutive reactions. Okay, so now we have to take the reaction kinetics. Let me take the reaction kinetics. Reaction kinetics. Take the reaction kinetics. Reaction kinetics. Okay. Reaction kinetics. Reaction kinetics. Reaction kinetics. Okay. So in order to derive the array law, let us assume in these sequential reactions or constitutive reactions. Simple reactions are of same order and they can be proceeds with the first order kinetics. Okay, so assume uh, here simple reactions uh, have the same order. Okay, so they have the same order and it is for the first order reaction only. Okay, so for instance, let us say A. A is giving the B. This is the simplest phase. So A is giving the B. Later this B is giving the C. Okay. So here A is the reactant. It is the reactant. Okay. A is the reactant. It is giving the intermediate. Okay. Giving intermediate. Later this intermediate is again converting to the product C. So this is the product C. Okay. So this which one? The transformation of B from A is proceeds through the rate constant K1. Whereas the transformation of C from B proceeds through the rate constant K2. So it is the K1 and K2. Okay? Yes. Now just you assume if we start A moles of the reactant A. Okay. So just we are starting the reaction with A moles. A moles of reactant A and it is after time t you also x moles of the A will be left behind ok so x moles may be left whereas we have the y moles of the uh, B and z moles of the C at time t ok so this is at t equal to 0 that means initial concentrations so initial concentration of the reactant and B is 0 and C is also 0 whereas at time T at time T then the <coughs> yeah the left amount of A is X moles whereas B is Y moles and C is Z moles ok so Z moles so if you have to, if you want to calculate the total concentration that means total moles how can you then get so it is simply A is equal to X plus Y plus Z. Okay, so if we do the uh, addition, 
integral equation for the dissociation of the reactant to A. Okay, so this is equation 3. So it is the equation 3. Okay, yes, so this is equation 3. Now another one is okay, just you should keep it uh, as it is because you have known the uh, things what we are doing. So that's why I am not erasing it. <coughs> so uh, below this one I have right. Yeah. Okay. So now <coughs> yeah, this one I have to strike out. Okay, no problem. Okay. So now if you take the uh, rate of formation of B, so how can we write the rate of formation of uh, B is equal to Okay, the rate of formation, formation of B is equal to the rate of dissociation of the reactant A. Okay, so that's what it is. dy by dt is equal to minus dx by dt. Okay, so it is equal to k1 into x. Okay, it is k1 into x. That's why in the simple way dy by dt is equal to k1 into x ok it is simply k1 into x ok yes now so this is the equation 4 it is the equation 4 <coughs> so that is the equation 4 Now you take the rate of formation of the C. So if you take the rate of formation of C, so the rate of rate of formation, rate of formation of C. So it is simply dz by dz by dt is equal to. Okay, right? Dz by dt is equal to. So here we are getting the C. So that's why the original reaction is directly proportional to the concentration of the reactant. In the present case, our reactant is intermediate only. Okay, this concentration is Y. That's why it is K2 into Y. Okay, it is K2 into Y. So this is equation 5. It is the equation 5. Now, if we want to take the net change of the intermediate B. So there we have to take the two things. One is the rate of formation of B and the rate of transformation of B into the C. Okay, so that's why dy by dt is equal to the rate of rate of rate of formation of B. Okay, rate of formation formation of B from A. Okay, the rate of formation of the rate of formation of B from A minus the rate of rate of formation formation of C. Okay, the rate of formation of C from B. C from B. So that will give you the net change in the concentration of the reaction intermediate B. Okay, so reaction intermediate B. So if we do that one, so how can we write the dy by dt is equal to k1x minus this <coughs> which one? The rate of formation of C from B is how much it is K2 into Y. Okay, so that's why it is K2 into Y. Okay, so simply we are substituting the this rate of formation of B from A and rate of formation of C from B. So that we are uh, substituting. Now, how does it become? So let me see what we can get. Okay, so this is the net change in the concentration of the B. Okay, net change in the concentration of the 
b now we have x value so x is equal to a into e to the power minus a1 t so that we have to substitute okay yes that we have to substitute so that's why here what you are right but x is equal to a into e to the power minus a1 t so if we substitute this value dy by dt is equal to is equal to k1 into e to the power minus yeah this one yeah not like that so here simply we have to the x, uh, x value so it is a into e to the power minus k1 t minus k2 y okay k2 y so this is the equation 6 okay so this equation is the linear differential equation for the first order okay this is the first order linear differential equation so if we solve this equation we can get a solution so that i have right here so let me write <coughs> okay so here what we are saying equation 6 is the first order linear differential equation its solution is y is equal to yeah y is equal to yeah it is uh, y how can we can get y is equal to k1 okay so y is equal to k1 a by k2 minus k1 k2 minus k1 into into uh, e to the power okay into e to the power e to the power okay so one way not it is not like this so its solution is <coughs> its solution is so it is simply y is equal to e to the power minus k to t k to t into k1 a by k2 minus k1 into e to the power e to the power k1 minus k2 into t plus c plus c so here here c is equal to integral constant integral constant integral constant okay so the equation 6 is the first order linear differential equation its solution is like this okay so this is the final solution of the third first order linear differential equation okay so this is the y value so now you just assume if t is equal to if t is equal to 0 then then y also is equal to 0 again we have seen okay y is equal to 0 when if t equal to 0 so now if y is equal to 0 what happens let me see y is equal to 0 now let me see how does it becomes so anyway you just do the number in this solution it is the equation uh, 7 <coughs> it is the equation 7 okay so now we are substituting the a value and y value in the equation 7 so now y is equal to 0 0 is equal to e to the power minus k2 into 0 into k1 a by k2 minus k1 yeah into e to the power k1 minus k2 into 0 okay t equal to 0 so plus c plus c so on simplification 0 is equal to e to the power 0 0 into k1 a by k2 minus k1 into e to the power again 0 plus c now yeah 0 is equal to something power 0 is what, what it is 1 only so it is 1 into k1 a by k2 minus k1 into 
0 again 1 plus c now c is equal to minus k1 a by k2 minus k1 so this is the c value assumed in the equation 8 it is the equation 8 okay it is the equation 8 okay so now what you have to do substitute the equation 8 8 on equation 7 okay so on substituting on substituting substituting equation 8 in equation in equation 7 how does it becomes y is equal to e to the power minus k2 into t into k1a by k2 minus k1 into e to the power k1 minus k2 into t so c value is yeah, minus k1a by k2 minus k1 okay it becomes like that so if we simplify further so how does it becomes y is equal to yeah simplify it y is equal to yeah it is k1 a by k2 minus k1 k1 a by k2 minus k1 into e to the power minus k2 t into e to the power k1 minus k2 into otherwise simplify it further okay instead of this one again you are simplifying it is k1 t minus k2 t yeah k2 t minus k1 a by k2 minus k1 into e to the power minus k2 t okay k2 t so on further simplification y is equal to so finally it is k1 a by k2 minus k1 okay k2 minus k1 into e to the power minus k1 t minus e to the power minus k2 t so this is the final equation so it is equation 9 equation 9 so now we have the x value as well as y value so if you want to calculate the z value you should substitute these values in the equation 1 yeah equation 1 so equation 1 is a is equal to x plus y plus z okay so now what you have say on substituting substi, substituting x and x yes x and x and y values values in equation 1 ok so equation 1 is a is equal to x plus y plus z ok x plus y plus z now we need the z, z value so z is equal to a minus x minus y ok now we have to substitute the values yes let me substitute the values if we substitute how our equation becomes let me see so z is equal to z is equal to a minus so x value is yeah x value is a into e to the power minus k1 t minus yes minus y value is so here we have the y value so k1 a by k2 minus k1 yeah into yes into e to the power minus k1 t minus e to the power minus k2 t yes now we are substituting the x and 
y value so on simplification on simplification application and simplification how does it becomes z is equal to 1 minus yeah 1 minus here k2 into p to the power minus k1 p minus k1 into e to the power minus k2 p by k2 minus k1 so this is the final equation okay yes so this is about the calculation of the concentration of the final product c okay final product c value so this is about the calculation of the concentration of a b and c by using the integral equations now i will stop here